Hi, I'm Jeremy Blowers, the Executive Director of the Ontario Regiment RCAC Museum in Oshawa, Canada. In 2019, we sent some of our members on a recce to Conneaut during D-Day Ohio. We had hoped in 2020 that we'd be able to join you there and show off some of our Canadian and Commonwealth World War II vehicles. Since the event has been cancelled due to COVID-19, we're helping out with D-Day Ohio by sending you this video which will highlight some of our World War II collection and some of the other vehicles here at the museum. Hi, it's Drew and I'm here at the Ontario Regiment Museum in Oshawa, Canada to give you a brief overview of the Axis vehicles we have at the museum. Some of you may know me from the Conneaut event on the Axis staff. Unfortunately, that event is not going on this year, so we thought we'd give you a brief look at what we have here at the Ontario Regiment Museum. As you can see, I'm sitting in the hull turret of the Panzer III, a replica that was made by Panzer Fabrique in the United States. It's an amazing exact replica of the Panzer. It runs during our Aquino event every year and many of our Tank Saturday events as well. It's a beautiful replica inside and out and we'll give you a quick little shot of it inside as well so you can see the detail that they put inside. We're gonna take a brief look inside and show you how cramped the compartment is. Just get inside the Panzer itself. There's not a lot of room as you can see and I'm not a big guy. But now that I'm safely in past the commander's seat, it's a very tight crew compartment. Uh, it's obvious that the crew worked very well in tandem with each other because they really had no choice. Um, and we'll give you a quick look inside to see what's inside by the breech, uh, by the driver and, and the gunner loader, just inside the Panzer III, which is a view that not many people actually get to see. One of the great things about the vehicles here at the museum is they're all running vehicles. It's not just a static museum. So if you come to the one events, you'll see these running out in our tank field instead of just being a static display. Nice up and close and personal. I'm sitting in the hull of a Swiss Hetzer that was in a European museum and is now in our collection. It's been restored to World War II spec with a late war ambush camouflage pattern on it. And a lot of the original parts were put back on here and you'll find that in looking at them, they have Waffen amps and a lot of original markings from the Second World War. We're now inside the Hetzer, and as you can tell, the crew quarters in here are very cramped. I'm sitting in the commander's seat, and Michael is shooting video from the driver's seat, which is only about three feet away, and we still have two other crew's seats right behind him. As you can see as well, the level of restoration that has gone through on the Hetzer is very high end. All of the little pieces that you would expect to see inside are here. Machine gun toolkits, gas masks for the crew, flare gun cartridge pouches, ammunition racks. There has been no small detail admitted when this was restored. I'm sitting in the crew compartment of one of two Czech OT-810s the museum has in its collection. These were made post-war by the Czech government and are very similar to the 251 armored personnel carriers that the Germans deployed in the Second World War. These are run by a crew of 12, a driver, a radio man, a crew commander, who also ran the forward machine gun, four men, four grenadiers on each side, and a man running the rear-facing machine gun. These specific OT-810s were remodeled to match the German model 251C and the 251D10. The 251D10 has anti-tank capability with a forward mounted pack and the 251C has a forward mounted machine gun. When we're talking about mechanized warfare, infantry always takes advantage of pockets and successes that the tanks and forward elements have created. 
The beauty about the 251C, as opposed to earlier models like the 250, is the 251C takes an entire group of infantry forward with the armored assets. German armored personnel carriers were normally supplied with a front and rear machine gun. Normally they were either armed with an MG-34 or in this case, the MG-42. The MG-42 is legendary in World War II for its extremely high rate of fire. 1,200 rounds per minute up to 1,500 rounds late war from this gun. This machine gun being so successful in the field that variants of this are still fielded today by the German government and other countries such as India or Portugal under contract, known as the MG3. There are definitely some dif differences between early war and late war versions of the 251. Early war had very complex and over-engineered rear doors, to late war where it's basically a slab of steel and a hinge. The 251D10 harkens back to the 250 model. It had much less crew compartment given the size of the pack mounted on the front and the amount and size of ammunition required to feed the pack carried in the back racks here. The 251 series of armored personnel carriers is very utilitarian. There are many versions of it, including the troop carrier, troop carrier with anti-tank capabilities. There are hospital and medical versions of it, command versions with radio sets in it, pioneer versions. There's also flamethrower versions and a version late war called the Stuka Fuss or the walking Stuka, which actually fired rockets filled with napalm. Another piece undergoing restoration at the moment at the museum by a dedicated team of volunteers is this German flat cannon, also known as the 88. The 88 itself was very utilitarian. Not only did it serve as a flat gun, but for coastal defenses and towards the end of the war as a direct anti-tank weapon, it's also the same gun that was mounted in the Tiger. Thanks for watching and your interest in the Ontario Regiment RCAC Museum. If you can't visit us here in Ontario, subscribe below so you can catch all of our videos and our different series. If you can, uh, visit the gift shop in the link below, get some great tank swag and support our museum. We also ask if you are able, please consider donating. Thanks again.